What? I'm the man. Welcome to The Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Remember that The Father State is now on Locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. And I absolutely appreciate it. You can also become a supporter of The Father State by becoming a member there on our YouTube channel. I have with me today John Zirka. He is a comedian and YouTube, YouTuber based in Canada. John, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I've been a big fan, big fan for years. That's amazing, man. That's nice. I didn't know that, but I totally appreciate that. So uh, are you based in Los Angeles or Canada? Well, I just I mean, moved out. I mean, not Los Angeles, but United States or Canada? Yeah, I moved out, so I just go back and forth from L.A. and Miami. Oh, okay. So I just go back and forth, but I don't have a home here yet. Oh, you don't? Uh, which place you like better, L.A. or, or Miami? Miami, for sure, because pe those people are like us. They say Florida's like us, but not Miami. Everyone in Miami likes Donald Trump. Really? I would walk around the streets screaming, MAGA, everyone gets happy. <laughs> Here, if you do it, they, they're traumatized, these gay liberals. Yeah, yeah. I, I was told that my, because we were going to move to Florida, and we might still do it, move to Florida one time. And they said Miami was like a Los Angeles city. It's becoming real liberal. And They're lying. Almost, oh, They're they lying. are. Yeah. Amazing. So, John, what's important to you? Jesus is king, and that's it. And, and what does that mean, Jesus is king? That means when we peaked at 100,000 viewers and everyone plugged in their programs, their, I have a dating course. I could have made a bunch of money at the peak viewership on Rumble when we peaked. Uh -huh. But I just said Jesus is king because I'm not here for money. Every other Christian channel is grifting. They, you can be gay and Christian and you, they do all this stuff. They're doing it for money. Right. When we were talking yeah. earlier, you said Nick and I should run for office, right? Yeah. Nick, you, me are the last three masculine channels online. Isn't that kind of sad? There's no one else. No, it is. And so we have to sit down. You had Vosh, Destiny, and Hassan Piker, the three homosexuals, the trinity of homosexuality. <laughs> you had them here, and we got to talk to them all day. And they try and call us radicals because we say we don't want to get our dicks cut off. <laughs> Is it radical to not want your penis cut off? Or your, or, or your son to go on hormone blockers at 15? Do you think that if, if men were to protect their children from that, because I've noticed that men are not leading their wives now. And so it's mostly the mothers who are like, because of their emotional state, they are for that. Do you think if the men were the head of their wives that that would be happening? Yes, but again, you look at Andrew Tate and all these right-wing kind of like operatives that help us, they say dumb shit like women have their role and are good at some things, and men have their role, and they're good at other things. That's not true, Jesse. Women suck at everything. The greatest chefs on, are men, Gordon Ramsay. If you get shot by a bullet, you don't want a female nurse to drag you. She can't pick, pick us right. up. Yeah. We want a man. Yeah. So if you're gonna lead, lead by absolute authority, not this, honey, you listen to me, so I'll buy you something, no. It's either 100% masculine rule or nothing. And so what happened to the men that they became so weak? You said it best. First of all, everyone agrees. Even atheists that were born in a fallen state, yeah. right? Yeah. We're born to sin. Yeah. We adopt feminine traits. And that's why these women walk all over us, right? When you adopt the spirit of your mother, you talk about right. I yeah. mean, you can see that when Hassan Piker and Destiny talk, the gynecomastia, the prolactate is shooting out their nipples. They're growing mammary <laughs> glands. Oh, no. You can see the feminine energy. And here's the weird thing. I hate bragging about getting women because that's like getting, you know, fooling an idiot. Like it's the easiest thing on earth. But the most toxic masculine channel, me, the most banned channel from Twitch, YouTube, all that. And now I'm back. And I got every single girl at every single convention while the guys were Hassan Piker. They're all good looking guys. 
They all had way more followers, way more status and influence, but the girls follow the toxic masculine. Why? Because women want it and men, we crave it the most. And so now that you're getting the attraction of all these women and they start to follow you and listen to you, are they changing? Is that helping them in any way? Yeah, so I went viral because one of them said in the first few days of dating me, I get all the passwords. If I start dating a girl, I have all your social media passwords, right? You can still make me some money. You can be on social media right now. I just met you, you're a stranger. But I get all the passwords and then she said, hey, do you want me to delete my OnlyFans? Where she posts her lingerie pictures and all that satanic stuff. All right. And people were shocked, they're like, oh my God, you can change these girls? Yes, if you are a high status masculine guy, they will stop being whores, Jesse. You can change them. And so they are changing from what to what? From whore to less whore. Uh, but they're still a whore, they're just less whore? Like from, you know, remember the slut and slut maker? Right. This is slut to reformed slut. Because remember, anyone can be saved. Right. Jesus can save anyone. That's right. But women are in a fallen state and they're like that because, uh, as you said earlier, they're born into the father thing through the mother and the father is supposed to help them overcome. Um, but fathers are not doing that. Mm -hmm. So you, do you see women doing your work? Do you see women becoming more of uh, the nature of God than that of the devil? Definitely after meeting me, they become like a lot better. But the problem is I grew up in this B system, so I do have sex with them. I am tempted, I fall too. Right. So that's the only problem. But if we, get, if we get past that, if we get me married, yes, I can convert a bunch of women, but it's exhausting, Jesse. It's like one guy has to do this. If there's 10 of me, we could influence 10 million easily. But this is like exhausting. It's like I have to date 500 women to bring them to Christ. Can we have a few more channels like me helping me out? Like, what the f do you Do you plan to get married one day and, and start your own family? You're gonna hate me when I say this, and you know, like, pardon my French, it feels like blasphemy, but the one thing I have more faith in than God is women never fixing their stupidity. They are so, 80% of marketing and media targets the credit card holder, which is the women. Right. Since toddlers, they're brainwashed to be sluts. I feel like we don't have a fighting chance. So a lot of these guys say, go to Colombia, go here, go. I gotta go over the wall to find a wife, right? So I'm thinking to myself, if I answer this, yeah, I do wanna be married, but is it realistic, right? I, if I get married, is she a virgin? Cause I'm giving her security, financial security, physical security, uh, a beautiful six, five Albanian man. She's getting everything. I'm getting a woman that, that someone ejaculated inside of. Like, she's not even a virgin, Jesse. Should I be marrying a non-virgin? Is that fair to someone like Brad Pitt has to marry a non-virgin? I think I'll kill myself. But, but women need men to be right so that they can be right. And so if they don't have that growing up and when they're young ladies and then they meet someone that really want to help them overcome how would a women in America change if men like you don't help them, show them how to do it? It's blackpilling, I know, but don't you believe there's psychic distrust? As soon as we start dating a girl, in the back of our psyche, we're thinking someone had sex with her already. So there's already tr this distrust from the beginning, from the honeymoon phase where, when we're having fun. Right. So I don't wanna say like I've given up, but I want a Christian theo theocratic nation to fix this because if everyone was promised a virgin, you know, we would go skipping to work. Men would be, we'd be building 10 bridges a day and people are like, you're attracted physically to a hymen. I'm not attracted to a virgin physically. I'm saying I want the trust that if I did, a, right now my girlfriend, she's 18, I'm 29. So I guess I'm a pedophile, right? But it's so much better knowing that you know, I had a virgin. Now, I'm not saying I'm marrying her. This girl's got serious flaws. But if everyone in America was dating virgins, we would fix all the world's problems because every problem on earth comes from the will of God is masculine. But what about the will of the devil? It's feminine, right. correct? Absolutely. So women 
single mothers, you talk about this, if, 80, if they have an 80% chance their kids grow up to be shooters, criminals, drug dealers, I was a drug dealer, they took, but I didn't come from a single mom, right? So I fucked it up all by myself. But single mothers are 95% of the problem on earth. Because to be a single mother is just a synonym for the biggest loser on earth, right? Yeah, You're I'm a the fucking loser. Single moms contribute to every, all the chaos on earth. That's exactly where the devil is, in, in the ovary. But what I, I don't, I, and you write that the women are born into the earth through the fallen, into the fallen state. But if men don't show them how to get right, because they don't know if someone don't tell them and show them right. And you are meeting a lot of women and, you, and you're a Christian. If you don't start showing them the right way or, or treating them that way, how would they get better? Because it's got, as you said, it's hard to find a virgin woman nowadays. It's simple. Get the fuck out of the workforce and no education for them. Because let's be honest, they're finishing all these degrees, but they are like, what is it, like 90% of the debt in the U.S.? How the fuck are they finishing all this college? And the reason our nation is in debt is because of these dumb bitches. Like, it's so obvious. We're in a, stuck in a group project with some, some of these people who have up syndrome. Like we're stuck in a group project with women failing for thousands of years. Plato, Aristotle, Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, they all came to the conclusion that women need to fuck off so they, ben they benefit from fucking off. We're stuck in a group project with fucking idiots and the whole world as the purchasing power increased. We all have iPhones and cars. Highest anxiety, depression, and despair we've ever seen now people are killing themselves in their Ferraris. What? The women don't want to work, Jesse. And they, they don't work. Do they work their whole lives? No, they don't. They need to get out of the workforce and just go start getting pregnant like the good old days. The 1950s was the best time to be amazing. a woman. You know, I'm not going to say the R word, but R word and harassment and sexual harassment did not exist in the 1950s. And they bring up the argument that it happened. Well, no, because the husbands were abusive. And I'm like, excuse me? You guys are going on Tinder and getting roofied at the bar. You, every one of you is touched since teenagers by strangers. You want to compare that to your husband saying, shut the fuck up, bitch, in the, well, while you're in the kitchen. In the 1950s, women didn't have these problems. They didn't even drink alcohol back then. But they didn't have those problems because the men were men then. And so my question is, if men were men, would the women be out of control? Absolutely not. But again, when we say men have to be men, it's almost this gay Andrew Tate bald position of be a man just to be a man. What is it to be a man is to follow God. You don't fall in love with your wife. Right, you follow, you love right. God. And so are you helping men to turn back to God? Absolutely. I converted 1,400 of the youth, and I got my team that I pay to check if there's bots or fake accounts or just, you know, bullshit. We checked. We got their high schools. We got everything on emails, DMs, and everything. 1,400. A lot of them were previously Muslims like me converted to Christ in one week of one comedy routine I did on a dating show called Fresh and Fit, I broke a world record. So my, and these pastors and priests and stuff, oh, you're a little too radical, you're too, you guys aren't doing your job. I'm doing your job for you, so shut the fuck up, get the fuck out of the way, clown. I converted 1,400 in one week. When these big channels can't do f one conversion a day, they're a pathetic. Th so you converted 1,400 men? Yes, very young men, uh, 17 to 21. And so now they're learning how to, they're growing into manhood? Absolutely, they're and, going to church every Sunday. Uh, have you ever considered running for office, like in politics? I mean, definitely as I grow older, I'm not going to just keep doing funny stuff right. and all this stuff. I'm definitely, one of my heroes is Malcolm X. I know he's a Muslim and stuff, but I loved X. By any means necessary, right. I will change this land. Because changing the U.S. has an effect, like Brexit, worldwide on everything. And man, Jesse, I was the last generation that played outside with bikes. I didn't have iPhones and all this gay Instagram shit. Right. Right. That came like yeah. way later in high school. Yeah. But dude. The good old days were, it was like the Garden of Eden. 
these people are killing themselves at 13. They really think because they have some apps that they have good lives. I genuinely believe if we bring the world back to the 1950s without the racism, but with the sexism, I think we can do it. So do you believe racism exists? I mean, I, the way I see it is the devil, really. I, don't, I think racism, communism, these are just fucking gay liberal terms, right? So do you believe racism is this? No, no. I believe we, f we, don't, we don't battle with um, flesh and blood. Yeah. We battle with principalities and powers. 100%. You know, as you know, I grew up in Alabama on a plantation under the Jim Crow laws. And there was no such word as racism during that time. It was a spiritual battle. And so- I want to come to the plantation. You do? We should make one. Yeah, that's right. Are we allowed to say that? It, it, yeah. This is comedy. It's, it's, I said that I was going to start a plantation, take the blacks back to the plantation and show them how to work and be responsible. But you got to really think, the Look, black racism, community, right, not only do they have the most soul, but they're very misguided because the, the DNC goes after, the Democrats go after them tooth and nail, right? You see how they vote. But look at a black man. Masculine will not share his woman. He'll pull a fucking gun on you. He won't share his woman. These guys can come to Christ. We can win these guys over. Yeah. And sometimes I see the right wing giving up on the blacks. Now give up on the Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's wrong with the blacks? Well, We'll start with a pigment. I'm kidding. So, <laughs> I think, listen, 100%, I hate answering this because it just sounds like I'm stealing all your stuff, and I really am. They don't have fathers at home, yeah. right? And yeah. you can see that. The teens lash out. They get loud and stuff like that. Yeah. And the women aren't so bad. You give the black women a hard time. These women go to church. The only problem is that the black, the black fathers are in the temple of prison, right? But... Black women are in church. If you get the black men in church, it's game over. You fix the whole community. Right. But the black women that are in church, they are like held to pay. They, their hearts are still wicked. And the, that's why they're in church, hooping and hollering, carrying on, because inwardly they're still wicked. They because have no a woman needs a man yeah. to go to God. We don't need a woman to go to God. That's right. We just have God. Yeah. So I, I know you're right about that, but... I, I hate that we shit on the black females when at least they're trying. You know, you see these white women are whores. They're never in church. If they're in church, they're trying to f the pastor or something. But I, I, I want to give it to the black women. They're at least doing the black dance and, and all that stuff. But that's all they can do, dance and sing. <laughs> you don't give them any credit. No. Everyone else is not going to church. At least they're there. But just because they go to church, but yet they, when they leave church, they go home and impatient with the children. They turn the children against the fathers. They have no love. What's the point of going to church? The dad's got to come back, and instead of fighting, black guys got to stop fighting people on the streets yeah. and go beat your kids. Yeah. Let's go straighten out those kids, right? Yeah. Give them a... Spanking is legal, right? We could do spanking. Have you ever said to a bunch of blacks that there's no such thing as racism? No, but I, I walked in a big hip-hop studio for a podcast, the No Jumper, Adam22, the guy that let his wife have sex with a black man, a porn star. Did, did you hear about that? No. Okay, it's very satanic stuff, but I, in the studio I said, I'm the only nigga here. And everyone looked at me, and after that episode, I, nobody fought me or anything. I got a 99% approval rating from the black community because everyone knows Nobody gave me the N-word pass. I stole it. That's how you know I'm black. You're black? I stole the N-word pass, <laughs> right? Black people steal. Am I crazy? Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> and I used to be black. I used to be a drug dealer, a thief, all that stuff. And then I converted. So listen, you were Muslim at one time, you said? Yeah, like culturally, I grew up in that kind of Oh, from over in Canada? Yeah, so we were refugees. We went to Canada by the Clinton Foundations. The Clinton Foundation, I was saved by demons. So in 2015, I was supporting Hillary. And then when I got fired and canceled in my city from my dream jobs for sounding like Trump, I said, oh my God, they're attacking masculinity. And what is this attack on Trump? What is the attack on the straight white male? It's, a, it's code. Yeah. It's an attack on Christianity. For sure. Because the whites is. hold the cross the closest to the heart. Yeah, so it's definitely an attack on Christianity. I absolutely agree. What made you switch from Muslim 
to, to Krishna. Right, so basically when I started studying power, like I'm obsessed with power and who rules me, and I found out most presidents, they were like homosexuals and uh, they would go to a different temple, not church, they would go to a Masonic lodge, a temple, there's plenty here. And I start reading about the 30th to 33rd degrees of these Freemasons and basically they promote Islam, they promote Buddhism, they created these, they promote everything, but the whole theme is they don't reject Christ, but they think Lucifer is the supreme authority and everything they do, media, politics, banking, is anti-Christ. That's why in the algorithm, those Muslim channels, they go to the top, but people like you get shadow banned. Yeah. Everything is an attack on Christianity worldwide. And I read history. Did you know the four wings of the earth, the gospels were heard by everyone on earth. At one point, Indians were Christian and they buried that history. Because if the, if the news is fake, the history is fake and the timelines warped. At one point, everyone on earth, Christianity was the only religion. Religions are just to take you away from the cross because Christianity is not a religion. It's the right. default position of God. Everyone in their heart knows the highest level of love is sacrifice. If I jump in front of bullets for my son, that's the highest level of love. And that's Christ died and we're washed in the blood of Christ. This is the only story of God that makes sense. Every other story sounds like a fucking Harry Potter flick. So how did your family feel about you converting over to Christianity? Um, they, they're just happy I'm not drug dealing and fighting people on the streets oh, and see. doing all that shit. Um, um, cause I worked as a nightclub bouncer. I was f***ing a lot of women, sinning hard. I was sinning this much, now I sin this much. But to the <laughs> average guy, this much is this much, right? I'm still, still bad. Um, I, I like having sex with models. That's my only vice. My so the only thing I have to fix. I, I was, I could be wrong about this, but I was under an impression that if you are Muslim, you cannot convert to another religion. Well, yeah, that's why they started attacking, how can man pee and poo, and they started attacking Christ in the comment sections of my Twitter, and my whole following, the gangsters who protected me were Muslim in my city, my whole following, all the money I made was Christian donators, and I still have 80% of them, but they still love me for what I'm doing, right. right, fighting feminism and all the evil, but they started attacking Christ, and you know how Christians turned the other cheek? and all that, I start attacking their religion. Then what happens? They find me on the street twice. We talk it out, nothing. Third time, three of them. I fight three, and I kind of started it, right. but I was fed up. And so I fought these, I have a black eye on twitter.com slash Zirka official, right? And I put, a, put it as my profile picture and they're all making fun of me that I lost. I said, it's three goat fuckers, okay? And basically they want me to like, they're saying that I need to come back and all this shit. They're trying to guilt trip me, I'm like, What's the largest name of God for all of human history? It's Christ. They try and tell us in 40 years, Muslims will take over. And no, the largest name of divinity. They had an argument saying, what about Muhammad is the most popular name on earth? That's not a divine name. If we go by names that are ascribed divinity, Jesus Christ is the largest name. So I can either go back to being a Muslim and say, my God loses to Jesus Christ, a mere mortal, a man, or that is not a man, that is, that is human form of a man, but that is God, that is the word in flesh. How the f can I go to any religion? Because then I would have to say, my, my God has a smaller clout, my God has a smaller following than Jesus Christ, who's just a prophet. He's clearly not a prophet, that's God. So, um, how long have you been a Christian? Two months. Two months. But I tried my first prayer years ago to God and it worked. Then I was too afraid to pray for anything else. Just sweat by the brow, did everything on my own. This time was a little different and I said, Jesus Christ. And it was very hard because I felt like a traitor. But let me tell you something. If you are a Muslim and you're coming to Christ and you feel like you're betraying your tribe, remember your tribe is betraying God. So do you, as, as a result of being a Christian, do you have perfect peace? Absolutely not, but compared to where I was, right. I was about to kill myself. So I'm, I'm way better now, right. but again, I feel no matter who you are, every morning you wake up as a satanic atheist and you battle back to God. I really feel that 
You don't just flip the switch. Every day you have to become a Christian again. You have to try, right? You have to pray. You have to do some acts. You have to, you know, you really have to just like, you can't say it's a fairy tale in your head. You have to right. feel like you're being washed by an infinite, you know, divine being. Do you believe that it's possible to have perfect peace? No, you do. But yeah, I but why don't you believe that? Because it reminds me of that gay, fat-ass Buddha. Like, you know, Buddha, perfect peace? Like, I don't, I don't think... Oh, I feel like... Buddha talk about perfect peace? Yeah, I mean, isn't enlightenment perfect peace? I don't think... I'm not like, sure about Buddha. I think you can, you know, definitely... Because the point of life is not to be happy. It's to reduce suffering. But I don't think you'll ever reduce it to 0%. I don't believe but that. But Christ came that we might have perfect peace. Again, perfect is, you know, a word that I ascribe to God. I don't think humans can be perfect at anything. Like literally nothing. Not at peace. But no. let me ask, have you, so who would you, you, you were raised by both your parents? Yeah. And who were you closest to? Definitely mom. I think most boys are closer to mom. Right. And so, and why not your father? He was very, working all the time, extremely masculine. Oh, I see. And so, have you forgiven your mother for the mistakes she made with you? Like, um... Yeah, because a lot of it was, uh, you know, there's a psychic kind of nonverbal agreement yeah. a, a son has with a mother where she says in the ether, she say, in the mental plane, the air, she says, son, never leave out in the world and become a man. Stay a boy and yeah. I'll just protect you. Yeah. And the son says, mom, don't leave me and I'll never go out and be a real man. And really, like, I was in for a you know, rude awakening when I joined the real world, when I found out that $10 an hour doesn't cut it. I'm homeless, sleeping on couches, doing drugs, and nothing, I have three jobs and I can't, I'm being dead. My, you know, like, really, I should have, I wish at 14, I adopted that 1950s position of getting a job at yeah. 14 and being a man at 14, Absolutely. 15, 16. And I, I hate saying this because I want them to finish school or whatever. I wish I quit high school and yep. just went to work. Yep. I know so many friends Absolutely, who just man. quit high school. They saved up for a down payment on a house. Man, I wish I did that and learned to trade. And So have you forgiven your mother for imposing her will on you like that? Yeah, for you, sure. But I'd never say 100% because, like, I'm sure it'll come up. Like, I'm sure I'll argue with my mom next month. Right. You know? But for but the why big have stuff, you forgiven yes. her so that God can change that? change, take away her identity from you what? and give you back yourself? Why have you totally forgiven her? I, I can't totally forgive her right now because she sees uh, me fight people on the streets and then I went away from it, made money, and now she's seeing, now that I'm, you know, the cocaine crusader online, I'm fighting guys on the street and I'll, I will die for Christ. I'll say whatever I want on the internet. Right. She hates that. She wants me to be at, you know, safe and stuff like that. So we argue about that stuff a lot where she goes, you know, your online antics are going to get you killed. And I can really just forgive her and keep doing it. But uh, I respect her opinion so much that if I pick up that phone call, she really gets to me, you know. Um, when your mother, when you, when you were growing up and you would ask your father to help you deal with your mother, to tell her to back off, did he help you do it? Yeah, I remember a quiet car ride where my dad said, <clears throat> son, never take a woman too seriously because they're dominated by impulses of anxiety. Yeah. And that's because they always yeah. think something's going to come kill their kids. Right. And that stuck with me because I'm like, you know, my dad is so attractive and he's stoic. He's like, uh, he's not like me. He doesn't talk. He's just masculine. Right. And I, I want to be just like my dad. So I never took women seriously again. And I noticed in workplaces, women do start panicking for no reason. Uh, I love my mom and aunts to death, but they can't really watch a movie with us without fluffing a pillow, bringing snacks. And <laughs> they always right. want to like, they're always worrying about something, the tea or like the kettle. So I realized yeah. like, oh, wow, the masculine frame is dismiss women and get the fucking job done. So why didn't your father teach you to work and, and be like him working while growing up? Because my grandfather and my father told me about work. My grandfather taught me. But why didn't your father do that for you? So my father, um, definitely for my twin brother and my older brother, they're both master's degree geniuses, um, you know, like with women and kids. And, you know, they did the life correct. Me, I was always a troublemaker. And I was always getting in trouble because I was failing high school. 
I had no interest in anything I was reading. Yeah. The only classes I ever got an A in was physical education and um, poetry. Not English, like just the poetry right. semester. Yeah. I don't know why, which helped me out with uh, becoming who I am as a leader, the po poetic stuff. But failing school made me stray from my dad for the longest time. And, you know, it took me like, I think, 21 years to realize my dad is my best friend. That Kanye line is so true. At 21, everything my dad said, I just absorbed in one week. And I went and I said, hey, you were right about everything. And he said, don't tell me. As in like everyone comes to this point. My brothers came to it at 17. I was very late. So 100% I was the problem. And yeah, because I felt, you know, failing class, I felt like a fucking loser. And I mean, now yeah. I realize that everyone who got straight A's, they're broke. And I, I pulled up in a Ferrari today, you know? So I don't need that school stuff. And you're right that you can make it in, in life without having all those degrees and things like that. But what I don't understand uh, is that your father was a strong guy working and apparently some of your brother was close to him. Why did he just leave you with your mother rather than pulling you well, away from Well, he didn't. From he left me with my twin brother. That's who really raised me. Oh, you did? Yeah, so I'm like a jock, I'm like a caveman, I'm crazy. But why I win every debate online is because my twin brother, he's a therapist, right? And not those gay liberal therapists. He knows what he's doing. Right. He changed my life. He's the one who taught me to debate and stuff like that. He said you can't go around the world being um, an idiot, you know? Because without my twin brother, I'm just a black guy with a gun selling drugs, riding around in a fucking Pontiac or whatever. Right. So he kind of changed me, but... Who is most like my father is my twin brother. They're identical, interests, hobbies, everything. Are so, you identical, identical twins? No, fraternal, actually. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so what was it like for you growing up seeing that your twin brother is close to your father, but you're not? For me, it was like I'm close to my dad for everything. I mean close to your like, father, but you're not. I'm close to my dad for everything except the education stuff. You know, he didn't like that I was, like, ditching school. I kept skipping and stuff like that. Right. But eventually, grade 12, I had only like four courses, really. But I got straight A's in all four. You know, I eventually fixed it. I overcame that. And really, that was like very late for the maturing phase. But I think I was very scarred because we're all three of us, all three of us. If you meet us, maybe you can tell with me, but we're from a war zone. So we're all traumatized war children, uh -huh, right? Okay. We saw a lot of death yeah. and hiding in basements and running around and stuff like that. And I think since I'm the youngest, that's like the gayest, right? The youngest is the most flamboyant, <laughs> kind of like, can we say the F slur here? No, no, we can't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was that slur. And so for me, I was the last one to actually grow up because a lot of that war stuff affected me. And you can see it in my content, you know, I go to war now, you know, and I've been in like so many street fights working five years as a full-time bouncer. So very quiet my whole life. And then as an adult, I started blooming into the loudest motherfucker on the internet. And so I can't tell you why it took so long, but I've never been more proud than when I look in the mirror. And I feel, sometimes I feel like it's, bla it's a little satanic to be that proud. Mm -hmm. But my narcissism comes from the fact that, like, let's be honest, God, he outdone himself with me. Like, I am a masterpiece. And I really believe atheists, the reason they're atheists is they look in the mirror and they don't see a work of art. They're ugly as fuck. Atheists look in the mirror and go, there's no way some, some infinite creator made this. But I look in the mirror and I say, you have done yourself, my nigga. Amazing. So how do you deal with you when you are alone? No one around and reality sets in and it says, uh, you're not what you think you are. You feel that fear on the inside and all of a sudden, you just don't feel important. How do you deal with that? Scripture. When you by time. yourself. No audiobooks, no media, no turn the TV off. Scripture every time. Every, there's something about scripture where, and I don't mean page one to the end. Uh, you don't start at Genesis. You go to the pages that interest you because they're talking to you. The Bible, you don't read the Bible. The Bible reads you. So when I started going to the pages that really spoke to what's happening in my life, man, scripture is just, it, f it fills the void in a way I can't explain to another human. Right. But the, 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 probably the most short Jesus quotes changed my life. A, a quote this big, yes, let your yes mean yes, your no mean no. Right. That shit changed me. I start telling the truth. What happens when you tell the truth? You get 100 million views. Everyone loves you. 
Um, yeah, scripture every time. So when you're by yourself and no one is around, yeah. you feel that loneliness and lostness. And so you read the Bible. And when you read the I Bible, listen to you it. start. I listen to it. Oh, you listen to the Bible. And you start to feel better. And so, but what do you do when that feeling come back again? I immediately get to work, career, gym, something productive. To avoid feeling that way? As soon as I get recharged by the Holy Spirit, immediately I go back to work. And uh, obviously if, I'm, if it's really bad, if I'm, you're, you're asking me what I do when I'm fucking up, I'll have sex with a model. If, if I'm really falling off the path, but the, I've never had sex with a woman without feeling guilty, without repenting and praying afterwards, and I'm not joking here to look cool for those Christians, immediately I go back to scripture. I say, shut the fuck up, get out of my hotel, and I go back to scripture. But if I'm fucking up, it'll be something with that hedonistic lifestyle. And most of the time, it's just scripture and career. Like, I'm killing it. Do you think that you can ever be alone and not feel that way, but still be at total peace without feeling that emptiness, that loss, like you know, nobody or nothing? Do you feel that you can be that way? Way, uh, not feel that way at all? Yes, but only because I have my family to think about, memories. But I believe that someone watching this, if they lost their father, brother, or whatever, I think that feeling is actually there until the end. Do you have a, uh, do you believe you have a, have a free will? Absolutely. You have a free will? Absolutely. And so what does it mean to you to have a free will? What does that mean? Right, so God, divinely ordained us free will to see if we'll choose life or death. And it seems like our soul negotiates with our intellect. For example, I always say faith over reason. And they say reason is science. Yeah, reason means you can sit down in a dark room, think long enough until it's a good idea to cut your penis off and go trans. Reason. You can re you can be a reasonable pedophile. You can be a reasonable bestiality, having sex with beasts, necrophilia with dead people. Reason is satanic. That's why biting from the apple, the excuse me, it's not an apple, it's a fruit. Biting from the fruit of reason is satanic. Knowledge is satanic. Knowledge is fake news. The only thing that ever lasted for thousands of years is the word, because the word is the fucking truth. So if you have a free will, why don't you will yourself to be free of anger and of fear of that emptiness that you get when no one is around, the cameras are all off. Why don't you will that away from you if you have a free will? Well, when I look at my past, total chaos now, great order and structure, but I don't believe in that absolute. Sometimes when pastors like you tell me, John, why don't you 100% be at peace? I find what you're saying is, why don't you be God? And I don't think you can ever 100%. Mike Tyson doesn't have a 100% perfect punch. Uh, you can never be 100% perfect at anything. The only thing that matters is progression. Again, sin is a snowball. If you're snowballing away from sin, that's great, right? It starts with lying, cheating, stealing, raping, murdering. It snowballs from little to big. Look at your trajectory. If you're going the right way, keep following the cross. If you pick up the Bible, you start sinning more, but you picked up some Mormon shit. Do you believe that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, do you believe he had perfect peace? Yes, because Jesus is God. And are you a son of God? Yes. And so if you're a son of God, why don't you have the, the perfect peace as the Father have? Because, because if you're a son because, of God, you're in the Father one. Because I am born in a fallen state. Right, him. right. But if you overcome the fallen state, it's the Father who brings you out of the fallen state, right? Right. But the and Bible so, says you don't just overcome it forever. Every morning you got to go back to overcoming it, meaning you're struggling for the rest of your life. Do you believe? And in, I don't believe picking up the Bible is the end of suffering. I believe it's the end of your suffering having meaning. That's it. And that's good enough for me. And do you believe that you can, uh, do you believe that, uh, so you don't believe that once you return to the Father that you can have peace on earth in inwardly? I don't believe in this 100% peace. I think uh, that's a satanic position. So Christ was lying when he said, I came to bring you peace, perfect peace. 
Right, but again, he will lie. Christ also said that you're going to struggle for the rest of your life with faith, right? No. That's what, do we, for example, let's say we have to sweat by the brow and go to work. Right. What if you don't want to work? <laughs> what if you just say, F work? You get on welfare. That, that, is, you get this, a that is a feminine position. You get a permanent action. <laughs> but let me ask, ask. Um, for example, like original sin, don't you believe we're suffering for the rest of our lives till we die, going to God reduces the suffering. But to say it makes you 100% perfect peace is like, who do you know with perfect peace? I promise you. Name one person. Let me tell you this. I promise you that you can live on this earth and have perfect peace within. Well, name That's a person. God, I, who's who's going to inspire me? That's why God came, sent his son that you may have perfect peace, right? So he's put everything back in order. And, and if you return to that order, you will have perfect peace. Do you struggle with faith? Not at all. Not one. Zero percent? I promise you, zero percent. It's the masculine position. And you can have it too because I can tell that Again, you Again, I, I think you, this is going to sound crazy, but I think you push people away from God if you tell them, I never struggle with faith because then millions of people watch you and say, this isn't for me because I struggle every day. I'm an alcoholic. You keep struggling. Just keep going to the cross. You know, when they say that, I say, oh, okay, you just stay in your hell and suffer. Because some people love their hell. And so if You're you, right about that. And if you notice, God doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, I'm going to make you come out of your hell. I'm going to make you this. He made the way for us to overcome, right? And if people don't want to overcome, he let them stay in their hell. So you believe in a cold turkey, someone could pick up the Bible and change 100% in one day? Not at all. Well, you have to believe that. No. So you, you believe no billion, billions of people, no man ever had perfect peace in one conviction? Your heart can change. See, salvation is of the heart. And anyone that has anger, Satan is their God. He's their daddy. He's their God. But once you go and forgive your mother for turning you away from your earthly father, because when you're not turned to your father, uh, the woman is your God. And so when you turn, forgive your mother for turning you back, to, uh, for turning you away from him and giving you her identity and return to the father and forgive both of them, right? For your father for not protecting you, your heart will change just like that. And you will have perfect peace. And then the spirit of God will make a home in you and he'll destroy the, the mindset just, and emotions of the devil. Why, you know, I agree with everything you say, except here I'll have to like, battle you because my first month accepting Christ was the worst month of my life. And I've been through everything. I lost my best friend. It was worse than that somehow. I don't know. It just felt way more pressure than that. And it, it was overwhelming. And I, I was cursing Christ's name the whole month. But I said, I'm not a bitch. I'm not going to switch back to I'm going to stick it out. I, if this is the worst month of my life, let's try the next month. I'm with Christ. I'm with Christ. But I kept cursing, punching walls. The first month of accepting Christ was the worst month of my life. No business, banned off everything, poor, uh, broke up with a girlfriend who was trying to kill herself and carved her leg with a knife. And I'm losing my mind and I can't see a therapist. I don't trust these liberal f***ers. I'm losing my f***ing mind. Now, the first month is over. The second month, I'm a famous millionaire and I'm here. Right. You're telling me I should go back in time and tell myself, Oh, you're struggling the first month of being a Christian? You don't have perfect peace? Yeah, I have it, clearly. That's like uh, saying God hates you. That's a terrible position to have. That's like, no. imagine if I told myself, I need perfect peace because now I'm a Christian. My first month being a Christian was the worst month of my life. My second, up until now, the less, next couple of months, I swear to God I haven't been sleeping because I think it's a dream. I'm living out my fucking dreams. And I'm surrounded by models they're disgusting to me. All I want to do is keep converting people to Christians and telling women to shut the f up. I have my dream job. And I, I, I don't even feel, this is going to sound crazy, I don't even think the garden would satisfy me as much as my life right now. I don't want to ever say I will have a 100% perfect peace. I don't want to say that. But if, I, I wouldn't recommend that you say it, but I would recommend that you... Neither say you won't or say you will because you, you life and death is in the power but of the But just who right? has perfect peace? Name one man on earth. I do. No, no, someone besides the host of the show. Um, I don't know because I don't Damn, know what no people one? have. But I, I'm sure there are people out there with it. 
Martin um, Luther King. That guy's a Satanist. Where is Martin Luther King now? Cheating on his wife and uh, dead. I rest my case. I rest my case. But let me ask, um, do you believe there's a past and a future? Uh, yes. And where is it? Um, the, the timeline of, I guess, my development. I can't hear you. My development, being a child, teenager. Where's the past? That way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the question. Where's the past? You say you believe there is a past and a future, right? Mm. So where is the past? I guess memories now. And where is the future? Yeah, I don't know that one. So you don't know where the future is, right? So why do you believe there is a future where you don't know where it exists or not? This d- is spitting. What? Damn, you are spitting. <laughs> That's how the young blacks say you're oh. killing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, J- uh, Jesse, that... You're right about that. It's like... Yeah, it's let go of the past, let go of the future, and just it, focus on God. You don't even need to let go of it. It doesn't even exist. Just know it's not real. All you have is right now. There's nothing else but now. When you're on cocaine, this hits a lot harder. Like, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> wow. That makes sense? Yeah. And, and why does it make sense to you? Because we, we as uh, civilians are obsessed with depression, which is focusing on the past, yep. and anxiety, which is focusing on the future. Yep. And we're dominated by these, which really come from greed, lust, wrath, all the seven deadly sins. The, those invisible impulses that torture us, so w- they, we make them our gods. That's, that's the nature of the devil. When you do that, you're worshiping the devil yeah. and calling him Jesus. Because it is worshiping the material world. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And the mind. Anyone that believes thoughts are worshiping the devil because all thoughts come from the devil. You, you know, all... Jesse, I've been watching you for years, but I've never heard this take of yours, so it's blowing me away that it's happening live or like yeah. on camera. This is one of your best opinions for sure. Because usually I win. You beat me. <laughs> uh, let me ask, do you create your own thoughts? No, I believe all the mental plane is dominated by demons. And so if you believe that, why do you believe uh, when the thoughts tell you you can't have perfect peace, when the thoughts tell you well, you're all alone and they tell you that you're lonely or that you're nothing or that you need more money or you need more of this, uh, why do you believe them if you know there are demons? Because they are. They're not from God. They're not from you. Why do you believe them if you know they're from demons? Yeah, that's a good one. It's just, I believe after life I'll have perfect peace. Right? But why do you believe demons if you know that the thoughts are demons? You're right. They're de- deceiving me. You're yeah, right. why do you believe them? Because I'm born in a fallen state. <laughs> I win. <laughs> But if you know that they are demons and you're 100% right about that, why don't you, when they come, why don't you just let them pass so they can't make you feel a certain way? Because if you notice when you get those thoughts, you, you get the thoughts of feeling good, you get a fake feeling of feeling good. Then you get the thoughts of feeling lonely or bad. Now you get to, why not just let them pass and not communicate with them at all? You know why he's right? You know why you're right, Jesse, is I've never seen you lash out, get angry, or get too happy. Right. You're always kind of in the middle. Not like a Buddha, but you're always kind of like here. You never have like extreme clips where you're freaking out or you're super happy. So you are like the closest to perfect peace, I guess, compared to these Hassan homosexuals, right? If you forgive your mother, you can have it too because you do want it. I can see that you want it. But you must forgive your mother for turning you away from your father and your father for not protecting her. And then God would take, he would, he would give, he would renew your mind. He would give you a logical mind rather than an illogical mind. Yeah. And he would take all that away and then you, you have peace of heart and, and the rest would be easy. So it goes back to what you said in the beginning, me and everyone watching, we enjoy our cycle of suffering. Absolutely. We enjoy love. flirting with those demons. Yes. Okay. You love your hell. You are the best f-ing pastor I've ever met. <laughs> What? No, I'm serious. I keep talking to pastors and they, they never make sense. And you know what's interesting is it is a masculine position of absolute peace yeah. because you're giving the devil nothing. Yeah. It's like turning your full back on him. 
And th this position I always see in a cured alcoholic, which the interesting thing about Alcoholics Anonymous, they don't give you a scientific, reasonable way to get out of it. Their yeah. first step is believe in God. They come back to us, those fucking cowards. <laughs> they try and sell us fucking, you know, that science with the vax and all that. But they don't use any of that science. When someone's yeah. about to kill themselves, they say, give them Jesse. Take that guy <laughs> to Jesse. You know, they try and trick us and say science is like the supreme authority. But when everyone's an alcoholic and trying to kill themselves, they send it back to the conservatives. We were always right. And Donald Trump was right about everything. Yeah. Will you forgive your mother? Yes. You got to shake in your booth because she's not going to like it. And, 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 and you become controlled by the person that you're angry at. When, yeah. Because anger is hatred. And whomever you hate, they control you. Yeah. So it's going to be like dealing with the devil when you face her. But, uh, and don't have any expectation from her. Don't expect her to apologize. Don't expect her to whatever. You just forgive, hey, mother, I'm sorry for resenting you. You recreated me in your image. And I have your mentality and emotion. I, and, and God I, will forgive you. I have a question about purity. Yeah. People laugh when I say this, but a lot of people, everyone who laughs, they can't argue it. When you put a young man in my shoes, we switch bodies, and they have my direct messages filled with models trying to suck my dick. Most people watching would go with these women, all 100 of them, 1,000 of them, and, you know, get the rabies and herpes and all that. Me, 1,000 girls message me, and I'll have like one a month. Don't you believe, because I'm around all that temptation, that I am more pure than a virgin who is around no messages? Do you believe me having one girl a month is that bad? Because I believe everyone watching this, in my body, they would bang all those girls. Or do you think I am coping and I should just get married? What made you go away from dealing with your mother to that question? Because it, I've read psychosexual theory of Freud of why men become players. I'm against players, right? right? If you have like but five But I ask you, would you go and forgive your mother? And That's what I'm answering. I'm, I feel that if you hate your mother, you have a bunch of sex with women. Right, and you know you why that, that? Yeah, I you know why, right? Yeah, yeah. Because when you hate your mother, the woman become your god. And you try and break hearts. Yeah. Yeah, you're I believe to, that. You try to get, you, you're subject to the woman rather than the woman being subject to you. And even drinking drugs and oral fixations, you're really simulating sucking on your mother's titty as a baby. You want to be nurtured. Right. You want dopamine and peace. So right? do you want to overcome that? Yes. Then you got to forgive your mother. That means no drugs, no women. Don't worry about that. That will come, God will bring that to order for you because the problem is not the things you do. Mm. The problem is the anger of the heart. Salvation is of the heart. Mm. And he will change your heart from that of, of the woman, which is evil, to that of God, which is good. I'll do the marriage thing, which solves everything. But if I marry a non-virgin, do you believe I'll have perfect peace with a non-virgin, Jesse? You're not, nobody. What am I getting? No one or nothing can give you peace. Only forgiving your mother and father will bring you peace. The heart has Thank to you. change. No money, no human being, no children, no marriage. Peace. You can have all the sex until the cows come home. Mm. You'll still be lonely at night by yourself. And you get so bored, you start f***ing cow-like fat women. <laughs> if, have you noticed but men you, who are players, they start f***ing everything, even the ugly ones. But do you believe me when I tell you that? It's I of do. the heart, salvation is of the heart. I do, I do. So will you deal with your mother? Yes. Do you believe that women have love to give? Yes. Women have love to give? Well, no, they have love to take. <laughs> do they have love to give? No. So why have you been trying to get love from them all these years? I think I was very programmed by mainstream media. And by, because of the resentment of your mother. Yeah, yeah. But who preys on that? Mainstream media. Absolutely. MTV and all that. Yeah. That's why they push the woman. You're absolutely right. Would uh, you say that all for divorced couples? Would you say the same problem with what? the men? 100%. All divorce comes from resenting your mother? Yes. Aren't you divorced? 100%. I'm, I'm, no, I've been engaged twice. You're not divorced? No. Oh, like the marriage never happened? Right. Absolutely. But isn't because that the I same thing? That, no. Well, I saw that in her, they became controlling. And I grew up not... Wait, uh, they no. only become controlling if you stop being the masculine force. Why would well, you it, stop? No, because I told her, hey, I'm not going to let this happen. 
and they wouldn't stop, so I got rid white of them. White women? White women, no black. He was a black, bo- both, both of them. Black, yeah. That is your problem. I dated a black woman, <laughs> I, I dated a white woman once. I, I went to a junior college, and I only went because I wanted to have sex with a white woman. Because <laughs> growing up in Alabama, my uncles used to go to New York and stuff like that, and Chicago. And they would have sex with white women. Snow bunnies. And they would tell me how freaky the white women were. They are. Huh? And so I grew up thinking, I'm going to get me a white woman one day. Yeah. And so I heard you could get one in college. So I went to a junior college just to get the white woman. Was once she I, a whore? Once I got her, I dropped out of school. Was she a whore? Was she passed around? or was she? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Did you uh, make her a slut? Was, no. Or was she a slut? I, I have no she idea. She came out the slut factory? Or? Me, because I'm trying, let me ask this. Um... um you understand that you don't create your own thoughts, right? Yeah. And there is no future or past. Yeah. And you know that God is right here all the time in the present. That's why he said, come into my present, right? Do you believe me when I say that salvation is, is of the heart? Yeah. How many identities do you have? I believe the one that I portray, which is the intellect, which is obviously you know, battling the deception of the devil, yes. and then the soul, because yeah. I believe the soul negotiates with the fake intellect, the fake Absolutely. Yeah. You overcome the intellect, man, you're going to be fine. Everything is amazing. It, but you got to overcome the thoughts, all thoughts, all lies, except for, you know, practical thoughts about working like you do. You do your work, yeah. you make money, you invest your money, you know, you do reasonable stuff. But other than that, once you come out of those thoughts, by forgiving your mother, um, and I got, we ran out of time, but I got it, by forgiving your mother and forgiving your father, your father couldn't handle your mother, and so he wasn't able to protect you from her. Yeah, but what about for my brothers that he did a good job for? He should have done the 100% job. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't, see, I don't know what your brothers, are, I haven't spoken to them, mm-hmm. so I don't know what their mindset and emotions are because... We, when because I forgive one my thing mother, I, do, I 100% guaranteed a marriage. Do you think then I'll be a lot easier to get, it'll be a lot easier for me? Or? The one thing I can guarantee you is that God will add whatever your desires are, he will add them unto you. And so if you should get married, he'll put the right woman in your life and she will uh, be from him and the marriage will last until death do your part. It wouldn't be this fight that you see men and women going through now. Yeah. Because the devil is putting men and women together right now. That's why they're not working. They are both are on an ego trip, and they both are trying to control one another. Yeah. And so that's what bring on. But that wouldn't happen to you when you forgive your mother. Yeah. Amazing, huh? You can keep rolling. Can, you guys can keep going if we ran out of time. Was okay. that late? That flew by. Damn. Yeah. I want to ask, um, have you, do you believe that you, I think I just heard you say that. I may have heard it on, on the video. Do you believe that Jesus is God? Absolutely. And, and why do you believe that? And he says, I am the life, the way. Nobody goes to the Father but through me. The Word of God. Right. The Word came to flesh. He says he sits right to the Father, which no pastor or scholar could understand. And I was like, how the f*** do you sit to the right of yourself? <laughs> the Word is always right. That's why the word sits right to the Father. Are you, you're not a Trinitarian? You believe Jesus is God because he said no one come to the Father except through me? Well, there's like 300 different verses that all um, points to the fact that the, the, the Jesus is equal to the Father. And... I don't, me, have them, I don't have them memorized. Right, I don't either, so I'm, I, I, I totally appreciate that about you. But the, there is one verse, well, I that's, saw you. I'll post on my Twitter after with yeah. this clip, but it, it, there's one verse that's absolutely 100% they are equal. But do you believe that he is God? Yes. You believe Jesus is God. Yes. And so when Jesus said, no man go to the Father except through me, if he was the Father, why did he just say, I'm the Father, come to me? I don't think But that. why did, was he referring to somebody else? Right, because I think the most loving thing God can do is live amongst his creation. And I don't think the Father would come in infinite power to us, would come the word in flesh, right? It would, he would come in the form of man, so we understand it better. But we're also divinely ordained to free will, right? We're not gods, so we wouldn't be able to understand the full thing without dying. 
You remember when Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Mm-hmm. Was he talking to himself? No, but it is the example he's giving us, right? But the Father, God, had left him. Right, but Jesus is the example. So really, when he is talking to himself, it's so we can hear it. No, but we're, we, given, he, we're given the perfect example of a man. How can man be perfect unless he's God? No, but I'm can, asking, man, can man be perfect? I'm asking you this first. And or then can I'll a prophet that. be perfect? No prophet in the Abrahamic faiths were perfect except one because that one is not man. That, that is Jesus Christ. That is God. But what I'm asking is when he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Mm-hmm. Who was he talking to? Yeah, himself. He would call himself father? He wouldn't do that without us watching. He's doing it so we can see. Right? So he, that, that, just like when he teaches us how to pray. He's really just teaching us how to pray. Do you really think he prays to himself? Of course not. So you believe that he was, uh, when he asked father, why have thou forsaken me? You think he, I don't understand. You said that he was what? Talking no, to pretty himself? Much the, no, the whole story is for us to understand that he was betrayed by Judas. And remember, he, he, that he knew that would happen. How would he know unless he's God? Um, when he said, I am going away, when he would go off and pray, he said, I'm going to seek my father's will. I'm going to pray to the father, right? I'm going to seek his will. Was he praying to himself? I mean, he's teaching us, yeah. He would, when he said, I'm going off into the woods here and I'm going to pray to the father yes. to seek his will. If he was God, why did he already know his will? Well, he does. He's teaching us. What do you mean you're teaching us? How to live life that we should pray. But you didn't see him pray. He went off and prayed. Right. But again, it inspires me when I'm feeling I'm having a shit day. I don't want to be around all this mechanical stuff. I'll go to the woods and I'll seek the Father's will and pray. It's not rocket science. Amazing. Uh, I never. So how do you see it? You're, what kind of church? Well, what, kind of Chris, <laughs> what kind of Christian are you? I've been watching you for years. I, I didn't know that you, you reject the Trinity, Jesse. What is the Trinity? The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and the Father. No, I know there is the Father, okay. without a doubt. I know there is the Son, without a doubt. And I know there is the Holy Spirit, our teacher, without a doubt. But they're not equal in one? I don't know what you mean by equal. Because you may be right. I just don't know what you mean by that. What do you mean by equal? Uh, they would be, just like water can be liquid, solid, or gas, but it's still water. I win. <laughs> so you think they're like water? That is something you just gave me? So let me ask, do you believe that you could do greater works than what Christ did? No. Why not? Some. Man. But he said you could. Uh, refresh me. When he was doing those miracles and things, right. the people were like, wow, that's amazing. You are some else. And he was like, no, don't praise me because greater work shall you do than what I'm doing. You're going to do the same thing and greater. Do you believe if... Uh, you know, I don't believe that at all. So he was lying about that too? No, I believe you're like interpreting it wrong for sure. No, he I mean, said. There's like a million. I mean. He if, said greater work shall you do than what I'm doing. Okay, so can you get him to the Father through yourself? No man can do it. He you can do work. a greater work. I thought you no. can do a greater work than Christ. Bring him to the Father without Christ. You can do a greater work, right? No, what That's I can ridiculous. do. That's ridiculous. I can do, I can point him to the Father. Also, these kind of arguments, you'll pick one verse, but there's like 500 verses that say only through me. There's right. like 500 verses and we're nitpicking for some poetic No, sentence. no, no. I'm just trying to understand, right? So what... Uh, well, uh, you, dis- you, you share my position because if you can't do a greater work and take him to the Father, you don't believe what Jesus said. I, I totally believe it. Then but, take him to the Father through your greater work. You can't do it because you'll never be Jesus. You know, How are you going to be God? No, no, no. But the greater work is if, the, if, if he's seeking the Father and we ran into one another somewhere and he, I can tell him where the Father is, how to find him. And if he, like you saw this thing about 
how the mind worked, right? Yeah. That was God showing you that. It wasn't me showing you that. He was, oh. Okay, yeah, he I allowed, agree with that. I he agree allowed that, you yeah. to see that okay. there is no past and there is okay. no future. And it wasn't me that was allowing you to see it. I agree with that. But if I point, I, I, I agree I point that, you yeah. to the source that caused you to see it. Okay, I agree. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Like yeah. if, if Zerka inspires people to be Christian, I didn't do anything. Right. The Holy Spirit poured through me. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amazing, huh? We on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to get a lot of views, I guarantee you. Yeah. Um, do you believe in the order of God and Christ, Christ and man, man over woman and woman over? Absolutely. Yeah. And when, when the boy turns 18, he has authority over his mother, right? So it's not just the husband. He has authority over all women. Absolutely. Men don't just have authority over their wives. You should get a whip. Yeah. Start cracking a whip for these women, <laughs> right? Not just the black women, all women. Yeah. Would you like to live a life without the thoughts, limiting your thoughts? I mean, I believe that when you go to heaven, it's not like Muslims say oh. they're still horny in heaven for 72 virgins. Know, which, huh? Could you imagine a worse nightmare than 72 fat, nerdy girls? But think about it. It's like being around women is heaven. That, I would blow my brains out. Like, that's when you see me on Al Jazeera. Allahu Akbar, kill myself, it's over. But Christian heaven, the only heaven, you do not battle temptation. You're not horny. You're not horny in heaven. Do you believe you'll be horny in heaven? Absolutely not. Why do you'll you be believe an astral being? Why do you believe you can't have heaven before you die on earth? Why do you believe you can't because have that's it? Because that's a that's a that's a Jewish position. What does that mean? Uh, as above, so below. A satanic Jewish position. Uh, really, Buddhism, all of that. If it's not Christianity, it's satanic, right? Not just to me. That's just how it is. As above, so below means bringing the heavens to earth. So rabbis talk about that. Satanists talk about that. Buddhists talk about that type of enlightenment. Oh, I do I not believe all. you can bring heaven to earth. I believe, you know, this is part one and part two is. Well, what I, you're right. Heaven is above, but heaven is inside of you as well. Why would you say heaven's above when you reject Genesis? You don't believe in the firmament and flat earth. You believe in Mars rover and space Wi-Fi, right? So for you, heaven's not above. It could be anywhere, right? You're not a flat earther, are you? No. Why would well, you I, reject? I, why do you reject the first page of Genesis? I saw you had a flat earther, Mark Sargent. He destroyed the guy in the debate. <laughs> I don't think you guys were listening. Is there no flat earthers here? You guys are Christians and you don't believe the earth is flat? You <laughs> so believe you, in the moon landing? You, it's you, been debunked a million times. Let me tell you this. Oh, I neither okay. believe it or don't believe it. It doesn't matter. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take that. But, yeah, you know, the greatest mind on the internet, Nick Fuentes, who beats everyone in the deb debate, banned from every platform. You guys are on his cozy. Millions of dollars. He believes in the firmament. If the greatest mind on the internet is a geocentrist, how is it a funny position? Like, dude, he believe you're, you're ascribing infinity to matter and space-time. The universe is infinite. Where's the corner? You're looking, every picture of space is fake. Do There's you... never been a picture of a curved earth. It's a fisheye <laughs> camera warping lens, or it's like, what the Google Earth, like that Photoshop shit? Dude, 120,000 feet in altitude. It's a motionless plane. Like Einstein said, the earth is an observable, motionless plane. Horizon comes from the word horizontal, and the four wings of the earth is in the Bible. All Abrahamic faiths and all religions were geocentric flat earth. So have you always believed that Earth is flat? No, it was the 2016 uh, when the Trump administration leaked through the dark web that uh, the, all the flat earth stuff. Uh -huh. They didn't want people to believe in the Clinton establishment. Right. Like, oh my God, if the Earth is flat, they're lying to us about everything. And then they shut it down. The most Google topic and the most banned. Now they talk about a disc flying through space and stupid shit. It's ridiculous. But... It is flat. No one's ever taken a picture of a curved Earth at any altitude. You look at the NASA Red Bull jump. Is all of Earth New Mexico? There's like no oceans. And it's 100,000 feet. And then they said, yeah, we use the fisheye lens. They always admit it. They either say it's a composite fake image from NASA.gov or a fisheye lens. They can never use a regular lens when going 120,000 feet in altitude. Because the Earth, like Picard said, is Earth is flat with an upturned edge, which is the highest shoreline on Earth, Antarctica. 
Antarctic Treaty, the longest treaty ever held, a compass, one magnetic north. There's no South Pole on a compass. You circumnavigate east to west, like on a plate, like Christopher Columbus, like the right. sun. The sun and the moon perfectly eclipsed because they're the same f***ing size. They are much smaller than the Earth. Amazing. And the first page of Genesis talks about this. So when you, you believe that one side of the Earth was round, right? No, what the fuck? You never believed it round before you believed that it was flat? Every single ancient cosmology, so, Egyptian, all of them oh, say it's okay. flat. So you never believed that it was round? I did and up until 2016, until it became the most searched And why did you believe Google? it was round? Because I learned it in high school. They so you believe me, how they said it? They, they taught me that you guys believe in Planet X. Right? And Nibiru and all those CGI photos and Europa. It's all computer. I'm like, my n they've never taken a picture of space that's not computer generated. How are people falling for this? Then I read 98% of the world's population has below average IQ, almost to a level. And I panicked because 98% of the Earth's population thinks they're on a spinning ball and it spins at the axis uh, at the, the angle is 66.6, .6, a Masonic number. They invert the devil's number. But when you look at it, it makes no sense because they say the atmosphere is not moving, right? Like it doesn't move with us with the Coriolis. That means a helicopter. If Jesse and Zerka got on a helicopter and floated for 10 hours, if it's a 24-hour cycle, we should be able to land in China when we land. But you land in the same fucking spot every single time. And they try and lie and say, no, that's because the atmosphere moves with us. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Are you fucking retarded? So let me ask, if you believe at one point that the Earth was round because someone said it, right? Yeah. The now government you, said it. Right. And they well, get $100 million a day for, of tax revenue. Right, but whomever said it. And, now and you know what's funny? All now, flat, Jesse, all flat earthers that do their own tests, they don't make money. 1,000 tests, it's flat at 120,000 feet in altitude. One million NASA tests. They made billions of dollars. Who the f are you going to trust? Clinton's government or me? What the so, f do I gain from saying it? And so why, me, why is Triangle this. Earth, Hollow Earth, why are those not the most searched? Because no one can defend them. If you say the Earth's a triangle, there's no one who could sit here and debate that because it's just f***ing retarded, right? I would lose every debate. If you say the Earth's a, square, uh, a cube, I can't debate that. You'd beat me with the scientific method. It, with every part of science, you'd beat me. If you say the Earth is flat, all airplane flight manuals say it's a non-rotating flat Earth. Just land the fucking plane. Don't kill anyone. And the autopilot uses an azimuthal equidistant flat Earth map with the ice wall that everyone makes fun of. Why would autopilot for emergency landings use our flat Earth map? And people are like, yeah, because it's like it's, it has to be used for... Dude, they're changing the sizes of the continents when they're using this map by a lot. So how the fuck, imagine emergency landing on your Mercator or a globe or, you guys would all die. You have to use our map. We don't use your map for shit. So, your military, everything uses our map. Let me ask map. this, so you believe The United that, Nations flag is the flat earth map. So you believe that the earth was round at one time because someone said it at yeah. that time, right? Yeah. I used to believe gays are a thing too. Now you believe the earth is flat <laughs> because someone said it, Yeah. right? It's supposed to someone. Well, no, no, no. It's not someone. Government said it's round. Right. Random dude who put a camera on a balloon. He did the same test as NASA. Both of them went 120,000 feet. Point is, one is a ball. One is flat. One makes 100 million in tax revenue with the ball. And think about it. If it's a ball, they attack the first page of Genesis. But, but my point if is, you, you say, still believe Jesse it. Jesse says, I don't care. Jesse, if you say you don't care about spreading flat earth, you're saying you don't give a f about the first page of Genesis. Amazing. That's the worst position you could have. And people are like, why do you think it's the craziest position to have flat earth? Because they, I could never believe the Bible when I was young because I said, those idiots thought the earth is flat. They were right. <laughs> Let me ask you this because of time here. So you believe, now you believe the earth is flat because somebody said it, right? Non-governmental. Non-government said yes. it. Nonprofit. Right, said it. Yeah. What would happen if another non government, non, some guy riding on another camel mm -hmm. over in wherever, and they came and told you that the, the earth was circular or something? I'd say prove it. Would you, and then you would believe it? You'd have to prove it with a scientific okay. method at 120,000 feet at eight inches per mile square curvature calculations. He would never be able to prove it. Does it? concern you that you don't know for sure that it's only because somebody said it both no, ways? I've already done the test. 
We oh, did a thousand dollars. Yes. Oh, okay. Mill, like thousands of people have done this test. Do you think if you put a camera on a weather balloon at a hundred, a hundred thousand feet, you're going to see a slight warping of the horizon? And it's not because it's just so big. The Earth is so big, you'll never see it. It's eight inches per mile square. The Earth is not even that big. We fly around it. You will see a fucking curve, bro. They literally say the. There's some scientists who said that the horizon warps and curves because of an illusion in our eye, and we can never see it. Like these guys let cope. Me, let me do this and because way, of time. Let me do this. Before NASA was created in the 1960s, I'll post the link on my Twitter. All scientific consensus was that the moon is not a rock. You can't land on it. It's cosmic plasma. That's why you can see stars through the moon. That's why you see blue sky through the moon. Because so the moon you, is translucent so and then me, transparent. Let me ask. It's a light in the sky. It's a luminary. Let me ask. Ask. Because the blacks are destroying the country, mm. they're turning America into South Africa. Mm. The white people are building a space out there. They are moving to outer space. Oh, yeah, you believe that? And they're landing. And are you going to go with them or are you going to stay here? How do you go to a green screen? Like I go to Mars, <laughs> like I got to break Elon Musk's gate. Are, are like, you going to go with them or are you going to stay? Because and SpaceX is government subcontract. No, but what, I'm trying, government. what I'm trying to find out, the whites are leaving this. No, they're not. This earth, they, uh, they have nowhere else to go. They're afraid of Wait, the blacks. Do you guys also believe in dinosaurs? What kind so, of Christians are no, you? No, but what I'm trying to ask you. They are leaving this planet. They are building a new country oh, up there. With the aliens? Do you yeah. guys believe in aliens, too? Like, give me a break. Will you go up there and live with them, or are you going to stay here? I will stay here. And, and I will with, stay where the... Because, Jesse, I always say, I always wanted to build the wall just to be away from the Mexicans. Yeah. And then I realized I'm just stuck here with black people. <laughs> you know, right. I'm it was a trap. <laughs> That's right. But no, I would stay, but, I will stay here. Yeah. Really? I'll stay on God's But I got to ask you this, man. Do God you, um, wants you here. So let me ask, speaking of God, you believe that you know the kingdom of heaven is above, right? Yeah. Do you know it's inside of you? Right, the temple. Yeah. No, do you know that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you? Yeah, but I, I, I still believe in afterlife that, you know, that is heaven. I, know, I don't believe in this. Do you, know, you can be doing Molly at home and Yeah, I don't heaven. know if that is either. But do you believe that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you? Yes. And, and, and why do you believe that? Well, it says in the Bible. And do you live from that kingdom? Yeah. You live from that kingdom? I try to, yeah. Do you live from that kingdom? Well, I get intercepted in the material world, right? The dark, the dark prince's world, the D devil's Do you live from that kingdom within? I guess no. You want that answer, right? No, no, no. I, I just want to know. No, because if I say anything else, you'll say I'm lying, right? No. <laughs> Look at my lifestyle. I, I never said you're lying. I, I, I don't just, think I do. I think and, and why not? Well, just like how you're not married, we're f***ing up. No, but why don't you, you don't have to be married to live from no, that God kingdom. No, God wants us married. I but, should be married. Why don't you live from that kingdom within, though? Born in a fallen state, I fall short. I fall short, Jesse. Do you want to live from that kingdom? Absolutely, but that kingdom comes in absolute when I die, 100%. But he said that you can live from it. Right now, why you live? No, why I you keep saying that. when I you die? You're interpreting it wrong. I don't he, believe that. He didn't say the kingdom of he uh, heaven is within us. Yes, but again, uh, there's more verses talking about afterlife. But he didn't say that the kingdom of heaven is within us. Yeah, he did. So why do you keep saying you have to die? You won't get it until you die. Why not accept it now? Because I believe in original sin that we're paying for original sin. Do you not believe in? But so you. You don't think that he can change your heart and draw you into the kingdom? Right, but again, the free will test is your 100 or 80 years on earth, right? What? You're, you have one life, and that's a test. Do you believe your life is a test, a free will test, a moral test? No, I don't test? know what that means. You don't no. believe you're being tested by God no. to live a righteous life? God has never tested you, and he never will. Why should he love you? Why would he test you? What would be the Same point of free will? What would be a point of the choice and free will? You don't have a free will. Oh, you guys don't believe in free will here? And you don't either. So what was the story about biting from the fruit? But you don't believe in free will. I do. No, you don't. I do. I just then will yourself to be free within and get rid of all your conflict. All right. Again. but Okay. So you're saying I have to be perfect to believe in No, no, no. I'm saying if you had a free will... Wheel yourself out of all the conflict. 
and then you'll believe me? No, I'm just saying, no, I'm not, I'm not doubting you or believe. I'm just saying, if you believe you had a free will, why don't you will the anger away? Why don't you will the conflict away? Right, because Why I, don't you will that away? Again, my position is every morning you have to go back to the cross. You believe that once no, you're no, a Christian, no, no. everything is just fixed. I don't, I don't believe that. I never said that. I, I never that. said that. I'm mean, just asking with the free will idea. Why don't you will yourself to be free so even when you're alone or you're with a crowd, you still have that peace within? Okay. No, that was a question. Why don't I will? Um, yeah, I have no answer for that. Have you ever thought about it? If I have a Let free, me ask you, why don't you will it away? I already have. Because we don't have a free will. But that's so weird. Did Eve had, did our grandmother Eve have free will? No. But she made the choice to bite? No. She didn't make that choice. She believed the lie that the devil told her she could be like God and that she doesn't have to listen to her husband. She could be like the man. She could be free and don't listen to that man. And she believed the lie. And once she believed the lie, she could no longer believe the truth from her husband but, who believed the father. So you but don't she, think she was guilty for biting it? Guilty for biting. She became guilty after she bit it because she believed the lie. Right, but you said she does not have free will. Right. So she's not guilty. She is guilty. So she had the intention. She didn't have an intention. She just of believed. Of course she did. For she's guilty. Example, How can you be guilty? That's like I kill someone, right? I intended to kill them. I'm guilty. That doesn't make sense. I mean, is, we, I believe Eve was guilty, just like me. She fell short, right? I don't understand that language. That's why I can't respond. What? what do, are, are we lagging? What do you mean? <laughs> is she guilty or not? She became guilty once she believed the lie. So she's guilty. And the reason okay, she be, okay, I agree. Because she took on the nature of her. Yeah, I agree. She had the free she will. She took she on had the, the nature of God. I mean, of Satan, right? Yeah, God gave her the choice, and she, yeah, made the wrong choice. He, he didn't give her the choice. She decided that. She no, believed. the story really is talking about how rotten the feminine satanic energy is because she's given fucking paradise and the, it still wanted more. I mean, and remember, if I go kick a child outside, am I guilty? Do I have free will to kick that child? You don't think so. Do you have free will? Yeah, no. like, do you believe I made the choice to kick that child? No. You have oh, never. Oh, so you believe it's just God's will, everything you, that's happening? You have never made a choice in your whole life. Not one human being. In the material world, I've never made one choice? Practical choices because God gave you the mindset to do that, to live on this earth, right? You may make a choice that you want to wear a black hat today rather than a brown hat. But those are practical thoughts, choices on a lower level. No, if someone, but you punches, don't their, their, if someone punches their mother... You're saying God wrote that into the script or he went against God's moral will? If someone punches their mother, you know why they did it? Because, first of all, they have anger and they were influenced by their father and the devil to do it. Right, but are they guilty? No. They're in, so you don't believe in a divine judgment day? I don't know what that means. God isn't going to judge you for everything you've made a choice on? I promise you. God is never going to judge you because you never made a choice. Then you what's were, the point of is this? What's the point of the simulation? That makes no sense. You were influenced to do it. You're being influenced and don't know it because you're not aware and you. Think you don't it. believe in a, it. The judgment day is in the Bible. God is never going to judge you. So it's, you just ignore that part? No. The reason I know He's not going to judge you because when Christ came, He took on all that for us and He He reversed it so that we don't have to go through that. And that's why we have to overcome the devil in our thoughts and But just feelings. when we die, I'm not CIA, but when we die, God, through the, our, through the endocrine system, the nervous system of our mother, girlfriend, wife, friend, everyone we've ever betrayed, he replays the whole life through their lens and you feel exactly what they felt when you backstabbed them and you see everything. You think you're not getting a replay on everything you did here with God watching? You don't where believe you, in that? Where do you get that from? Because I don't even know what that means. I'm not, I'm, so you don't you believe, like, you, don't, you believe everything you did here is not gonna be replayed at all? Did you just make that God? up? 
You don't, a Christian who doesn't believe in Judgment Day, you guys, you guys got to turn, you guys got to become Catholics today. Do, this is crazy. Do you believe that if you... If I go with Jesse's logic, I can do, I can go punch a child. That's like my dream job. No, you can't. Why? But if you did, it wouldn't be because it was your decision. I'm tempted. <laughs> if I, the first kid I see, it's on site, right? <laughs> I want to pick a black kid, too. Do you believe that you have, you, have you ever made a decision? Yes. You, All sin is you f***ing up, making the wrong choice. Not the devil influencing you in your imagination? Right, but again, the devil can only take your soul if it is for sale. Just. Does the devil influence you to do things that you didn't want to do or you wish you had yeah, not done? Yeah, absolutely. And so why do you take credit for that? Because the devil, the soul belongs to Christ. You put it up for sale for the devil. It's your fault. What does that mean? When the devil influences you, ultimately it's your choice. Are you pro-life or pro-rape and murder? <laughs> it's your choice. Let me ask. Uh, Jesus is king. That's right. But let me ask. So you think, other than practical choices we do, right? When we want to live, buy a house and stuff like that. You think you have made decisions. The things that you have done that was wrong, did you make the decision to do those things? I was influenced by the devil. Right, and so if you were influenced, why do you take credit for it? Because, just like Eve, I bit from the apple. But you were influenced by a spirit. Why do you take the credit for it if it, you didn't make that decision? Because I'm, being, I'm, literally, I'm, on the, I'm on earth being tested if, I, if my moral character will convert the youth to Christ or will I just do blow with hookers Right? God wants to see which path I'm going to take. You think God would test you? Why does God need to test you? Um, these are like questions that like, you're really saying answer for God, which I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. Why I'm not going to answer for God, Jesse. But no. why, why does you yeah. believe he's testing you, right? Absolutely. Why does he need to test you? I wouldn't answer that. That would be, that would be blasphemy. You know the answer to it? Absolutely not. Oh, That's like saying, know. why is the sky blue? Amazing. And, and because I got to start ending the same way, but I got to ask. So you believe God tests you? Yes. But you don't know why he tests you? I, there's a zillion things I don't know. Have you ever... Like why, why did God make the waves like this in the ocean? Do you know? Because he's God. Okay. Ask but, me the question again. You believe that God tests you? Yes. And, 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 and Why? Because he's God. I knew you were going to say that, but oh, I wanted you. <laughs> I knew you. But that's not great. true, though. He, God does not test you. Wow. Let me ask, what, because of time, you believe that you're going to die one day? Yes. And why do you believe that? It says so. Where does it say that we're going to die? I should have brought my footnotes here. But I'm not, I don't know the Bible. I love that about you. I saw you in this interview, and, you know, and that preacher that you talk, had no clue what he was talking about. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, he, you watched that? Yeah. Oh, wow. And I thought you'd agree with him more than me. No. Oh, wow. He was totally wrong. Right, right. Um, so why do you believe you're going to die? I see it all around me. You know, people die, and I feel it. Like, it's coming. You feel like you're going to die? What is that, what's that feeling? Well, if we want to do anecdotal, my experience, I've overdosed twice and cooked my organs uh, through the like, extreme temperatures on drugs. I used to be a, a fitness model, and we all these fitness model guys would take these certain drugs. I was the most extreme. And so I've already overdosed and came back. And you so left your body? No, no, I, I, don't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't say any of that. I'm just saying, like, I felt that you know, like that I'm suffocating and this is my last breath and I felt that. And yeah, I've had like a lot of near death experiences or like a bad violent car crashes. So, you know, I'm definitely, it's like, I believe that I'll die. Really? And I lost my best friend, he was stabbed to death um, outside of my nightclub. So I lost most of my friends I work with to drugs, overdose, all that kind of stuff. Do you feel other people pay? Yeah, for sure. And how is that possible? Uh, I think it's not like because I'm a good person. I think it just reminds me of me. So if I see a man at the bar get cheated on by his wife, be because he's a man, I can kind of relate. And I go, oh, that could happen to me someday. So it's a selfish thing. And you feel their pain? Well, I feel my pain. You but know? you don't feel their pain? No, it's like a mirror.
Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this death thing, God said that death has been conquered. There's no such thing as death. Yeah, because we get it's, it's, everlasting it's, life. And so if he says that there's no such thing as death, why do you believe you're going to die? Well, when he says there's no such thing as death, he means we go on to the infinite. So why do you believe you're going to die then? Oh, as a Christian, I don't die. That's beautiful. You won. I ain't you won. To win. Holy shit. I'm not trying to win. What? No, I, I am. <laughs> 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 wow, yeah, you're right. I'm invincible. I'm invincible. But I there like is that. one death that you have to do if you want to live. You know what that is? The ego death. You got to die from the ego, and when you die from the ego, and the ego is all your plans, yeah. all your ideas, all your identities you picked up. When you die from that, you shall live. Yeah, but that's also a Buddhist position because, you know, God wants us to sweat from the brow, work hard, and stuff like that. You don't, I don't think you should quit your career and just no, become a Buddhist monk. I don't either. Yeah. That's a dumb idea. But there, there's ego to your career. That's a weakness. There's ego to our careers, for sure. And ego develops over time because we come here as a primitive soul. That's why teenagers don't kill themselves. I mean, teenagers kill themselves. Yeah. Children don't because they're a pure soul. But through until knowledge, mother, we start to sin. Until the mother screw them up. Yeah. Through knowledge, we start building up that baggage called ego, One, for sure. one last thing about that. Uh... Uh, blah, 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 blah. So do you believe that the word, the Bible is the word of God? Well, it's divinely inspired by uh, Gnostics who heard it. Do you, so they had psychic revelations. I don't believe it's like the Quran. Do you believe it's the word of God or the word from God? Um. The word from God. Right. But and, I, I will say it is the word of God. That's how I speak, but yeah. And, and where is the word of God? Uh, accept Jesus Christ and you will have everlasting life and be saved. Where is that the is word the of God located? Um, you, what, do you, what do you want, scripture? You want, no, no scripture. I'm just saying, just in English, tell me where it is. Because you're right, the Bible is not the word of God. And I'm asking, where is the word of God? Oh, it's definitely within us. It's in our psyche, DNA, right? We know for a fact we're born sinners. We, no one has to, we don't have to read that. Everyone knows that they sin. Everyone feels envy, wrath, greed. We feel all those. We, you, you, it's in our DNA to know that that book is the truth. But that's not you that's feeling those things. Well, no, no. You I know think that, right? 99% percent of thoughts are devilish thoughts, and those but, that, but the soul, the soul is not touched by the devil. The soul can you, can goes you, to the cross. Can you have the pain without the thoughts of, of loneliness, suicidal thoughts, emptiness, a void? Can you have those pains without thoughts? No. So the, those pains come from the thought, right? Absolutely. And the thoughts are of the devil, right? Yes. So then why do you, they, you believe they are yours, you? Because that, I still believe that the 1%, the soul, is the most powerful. But part. why do you believe all the different emotions you get are you if they're from the devil? Because I'm making the choice to absorb them. I'm still using my soul. I have a soul still. The soul beats all the thoughts, by the way. If you deny your soul, if you want to be an airplane pilot and you deny that craving and become an accountant, eventually when you're 30, you either have a mental breakdown or quit and go just fly planes for the rest of your life because the soul cannot, you cannot run from who you, who, who you are. The soul will hypercompensate, even if it's an ember, just like a tiny flame in, in an ocean of satanic thoughts, the soul comes back. Mine came back to Christ, I'm a radical. Now this shit's an inferno. This place is about to be lit on fire. Call the firefighters, I have got the highest power level out of any Christian on earth right now. Who knows how long this flame's gonna burn? Might get smaller, might start fucking up and you know, fucking hookers or whatever. But the point is, I believe that the soul that negotiates with the devil, the thoughts, is much more powerful. And the soul is that free will that says, fuck you, I'm doing it my way. And my way is my father's way. I don't quite understand what you're saying, but why don't you use that soul to overcome all those emotions? Well, I have. I mean, look at who I am. I'm probably the most envied guy on the internet. And I hate talking like that because it's like 
gay narcissism, <laughs> but starting from where, from where I started, pull, I used to pull knives, pull <laughs> knives on people. I used to be the most satanic. Now I'm fucking glowing. I've, I've, I have the glow, right? And, but you're asking me to, he's really just saying up your power level more. Jesse, I'm peaking. <laughs> I don't, we'll go higher, but relax. <laughs> if I go any higher, they're gonna arrest me. They're gonna throw me in jail. So I gotta ask, what is love? Gay. I mean, nowadays, love is just gay. Like, you love your girlfriend, you love your dog, you love, it's so, there's only love for God. Everything else is some absolute. Do you believe God is love? Absolutely, he died for us. And so why did you say gay then? Because you're asking what is love in this world where it's like girlfriend and this no, and that. No, I wasn't, no, I wasn't. Oh, you're not? No. Okay, I thought you, the next question is, do you love your girlfriend? You've asked that before, but yeah, love, there's only love for God, that's it. Okay, amazing. This is gonna do a million views. You having fun? I can't believe, yeah, I'm having a blast, Jesse, and like anytime you guys need me for anything, okay. especially when I have millions of followers, use me. Okay. Right, we're on the same war path, right? And but you're about to say you can't believe what? I, I can't believe that uh, you completely disagree with that pastor. He's a Protestant, aren't you guys? Are you a Protestant or? I'm just a Christian. Yeah, because I guess it's offensive if you're in one. A lot of Christians tell me it's offensive if you pick one. You just have to follow Christ, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I understood him, but I didn't agree with him. Okay. Because he too thought that uh, the Bible is the word of God, mm. and the Bible is not the word of God. It's the word from God. He inspired other men to yeah. write it. So it's the word from God. The word of God is written in but our hearts. Do you believe that at one point everyone on earth had the Gospels, and then they start perverting it with other religions? I believe that uh, when they learn the gospel, quote unquote, they allow their intellect to get in the way. Yeah. And the intellect make them think that they're all right because the mind think that it's the only right thing. No, everybody, if you don't agree with it, you're wrong, right? And so in their ego's nature, once they intellectually learn the word, they start fighting one another because they had a disagreement. And the, and the mind can't accept anyone disagreeing with it. Do you share the Catholic position of the lake of fire that if you go to hell, you burn? Or do you believe like the burning is your life sucks on earth? Do you believe afterlife you can go to hell? There is a hell, yes. But not on earth, like, yeah, you suffer on earth when you make, you know, when you uh, go away from the moral code, but do you believe there's like an afterlife where you burn, like a, the Catholic position? Do you believe in that? No. Really? No. Why? You do burn, but it's not a lake of fire. You know how anyone that has anger, inwardly they are burning. Okay. They 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 have jealousy. They have envy. Okay. So more strife. metaphorical for you. Yeah. They, okay. they have strife. They're unhappy. They have suicidal thoughts, and they are uh, uh, re they're revengeful, and everything. Right. Yeah. And that's what hell is on earth. But when you overcome your anger, all that stuff disappear, and you can have heaven on earth. Okay. Do you believe that? Not all the way, but yeah, we already talked about that one. So, so what is sin? You mentioned sin earlier. I plan to ask, what is sin? Yeah. What is sin? It was biting from the fruit. Uh, you know, believing in that. I can't hear you. It's biting from the fruit. It's believing in that uh, impulse that tells you to lie, cheat, steal, all that. <clears throat> anything, let's say, wrath, greed, envy, anything that stems from that uh, would be sin. Yeah. And, and where, where do you get that from? The Bible, the seven deadly sins. It, it said that those are sins? Yeah. Well, God said sin is of the heart. Anyone that has anger... He used to call it hate, but they changed the word. You know how they changed the words and make them? It was called hatred. It was called uh, resentment. And then it was called anger. They try to make it sound better, right? But anyone that has anger is sinning because anyone that has anger, they judge, they make decisions, they try to be God. Yeah. And so anyone that has anger, God says, uh, salvation is of the heart. Well, Catholics so, judge the most, Jesse. That's right. You hate them? No. You think Catholics go to hell? No, I think that if they have anger, they're already in hell. Okay. So anyone that has anger. So is you really in go hell. off when you meet a Christian, you don't even listen to what they say. You go off their temperament. If I'm sounding really uptight, stressed, and aggressive, 
you go, oh, this guy is in sin. But if they're like you, relaxed and stuff like that, then you go, oh, this is the true Christian? No, I don't do either one of those. <laughs> I can't win, bro. I can't win. This is, like, <laughs> this is Black History Month. Bro. I got to leave. Ah. <laughs> Hassan Piker and Destiny, you remember them? Yes. Destiny is a beta male? He lets his wife have sex with strangers. That's a beta male? <laughs> That's definitely a homosexual what? beta male, right? I just want the clip. <laughs> Listen, so I got to put you on the hot seat. Kill me. And I need you to answer these as quickly as possible. Right. All right. Because then you win. So I do this too. If, they, if you got to answer quick, you're going to f me up. You're going to destroy me. No. no. All right, let's go. The hot seat. What is a man? Um, a man is someone who uh, loves God, and the byproduct of that will be taking care of his tribe. Is America in the best country on this side of heaven? F yeah. Is the earth round or flat? Flat. Do you love the Muslim? Yeah. True or false, destiny is a girl's name. Yes, but an ugly girl's name. <laughs> Is smoking alpha or beta? Beta, oral fixation. Does a chicken have lips? Yes. Was Jesus white or black? Bronze. The Bible says bronze, but it's irrelevant. Which is worse, abortion or slavery? A what? Abortion or slavery? Abortion. Okay. What the f***? Uh, is the Illuminati real? Well... It's really a Freemasonic order. It's not the Illumin the Bavarian Illuminati is kind of like a meme, but Freemasons do run the world, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, and I'm not gonna take down your channel talking about that stuff. So. Um, does a chicken have lips? No, has a beak. <laughs> Did the bear, does the bear shit in the woods? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Did you have fun? Best show I've been on, and I've been on a million. Yeah. And Discord calls and Zoom calls, this is the best one because I destroy these people. And you, he did stump me a couple of times, right? And I've never lost to a black man. <laughs> you black. Right? But I'm, I'm black too, so, right? <laughs> Two guys arguing. This was not, not only is this gonna do great, but Jesse, you kind of made me. Like, who, who do you think I was watching when I was finishing work at the club, sinning, right? And I'd sleep with some fing whore. I'd turn you on. And uh, I, my favorite one is when you used to do it in public. You used to go to the, the pussy, pussy yeah, ad march. Yeah. And we got to do that, where we go to the pussy That'll march and we'll make we make those cry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah, it was amazing. You, Tell the folk, put out what, how to get to what you're doing and whatever you. I've got thezerkaofficial.com. I've got twitter.com slash zerkaofficial or just John Zerka for YouTube. But who cares? Christ is king, that's all that matters. And you, hey, I'm telling you right now, compare me to any YouTuber, influencer, Instagram, Twitch guy, there's a reason why everyone who watches me, if, even if they have millions of dollars and millions of followers, they all wanna be like me because I'm charged with the Holy Spirit more than anyone on YouTube right now. I'm telling you, come to Christ everything gets better. Maybe you'll have the first month horrible like me, or maybe the second month, but when it switches, you will never go back. When you go to jail, you don't read Harry Potter to fix your life. You don't read any Elon Musk science, gay dinosaurs. When you go to jail and you want to set <laughs> your life straight, it's the word, and the word is, Jesus is king. Thank you for having me. That's Amazing, great. thank you for coming. Do you love white people? That's the master race. Of course I do. Amazing. Thank you, man. And don't forget that the Father's Day is now on Locals.com. So click the link in the description there to support our work. Check out my merch. Uh, follow, subscribe, like, ring the bell, and all those good things. And you can support the Father's Day by becoming a member on the YouTube channel. Let me hear from you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. And thank you, man. That was amazing. It really was. Thank you. All right. Amazing. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome, man. I've been waiting years for this. <laughs> I didn't even think it would happen, to be honest.
So let's pause there for a minute. I, fin- I finished this. Let's pause there so you can get some water. No, I don't want to. You want this? I haven't drank it. I love it. Yeah. Okay. You didn't sip from this because I don't want to start turning black. No, no, I haven't touched it. <laughs> but, uh, 